future of space and the secrets of our planet revealed. This is Star Talk. Welcome back to Star Talk Radio. Hello. I have some questions, Neil. Lynn, my co-host. <laughs> Lynn, my comedian. I'm your, I'm your host, Neil deGrasse Tyson. I'm an astrophysicist. And my day job is as director of the Hayden Planetarium in New York City. Lynn, do you have a day job or you only work at night? <laughs> well, thanks, Neil. <laughs> no, I didn't mean Are it that way. Are you just a hooker or do you do other stuff? <laughs> um, no, I, I, I don't have a day job. I mean, I, I write and do... You, you, but you work at your, your night, you do night clubs. Yeah, I, I work yeah. all night. I, I got off at 3 o'clock in the morning. Oh, okay. Okay, Neil. It, well, in the show, we interviewed John Stewart oh, in three okay. segments, and we have his latest book sitting right in front of us on this table, Earth, A Visitor's Guide to the Human Race. And, Lynn, your copy of the book is dog-eared completely. You've been I like it. You've been hanging out in the appendix. I have this job now that where I have science stuff, and this is funny science. Science? And I, that's and my, it combines you and me, funny right. and science. <laughs> Is there stuff there? You need some... Yes, I have a question. I want to know... See, this is what people... People say to me, oh, is it is it fun uh, co-hosting with Neil? I'm like, yeah. Are you kidding? It's it's great to have an astrophysicist right by your side. <laughs> and I'm like, what about this? What does this mean? Um, well, thank I wanna, you for that. Yeah. <laughs> You're welcome. Okay. Uh-huh. I want to go through my own private genius. I want to go through <laughs> um, the things that John, some jokingly and some seriously, that he said could be the end of the world. And just quickly, I want you to tell me on a scale of 1 to 10... What the chances are? Gotcha. Ecological catastrophe. For rendering us extinct yes. on a scale of one, the likelihood. Yes. Where one is unlikely, ten is likely. One to ten. <laughs> okay, I would say ecological disaster five. Of all, the, if we do oh. go extinct, the chances of it being ecological disaster, I'd say five. five. I'll put on a scale. Nuclear one. holocaust. Five. Hmm. Okay, robot rebellion. I didn't know you'd be giving me a test. You know, had I known, you know. I'm just writing them down. There are things I want to know about okay. what I have to focus on. Uh, robot rebellion, zero. <sighs> oh my God! Some people peeled the Spock ear back right now and <laughs> cried. Okay, give, uh, uh, a one. I'll give them a one. Not a one. Uh-huh. one. Yeah. All right. Uh, black hole. Black hole. That would be th- if you had to go. That's a fun way to go. So just. I didn't ask you what you think is a fun way. Okay. Is it, what's the chance? Uh, uh, a half. A half. That's yeah. not gonna. Okay. And rapture. I'll rapture. Give it a nine. <laughs> okay. <laughs> rapture. That's from the Bible. There's a, isn't there a, a Blondie song called Rapture? No, it's but there's a big trumpet and then me and a bunch of other Christians leave. <laughs> <laughs> and you stay here I'm, for a while. I am much less convinced of this than <laughs> devout Christians, so I got to go low on that one. I knew that was. I, I give that one a negative one. Okay. Go even on. even <laughs> even below the shark bee mutation. <laughs> below the shark bee mutation. I know we got people in the labs mutating gene pools, so. What about pan? How do you say that? Pandemic. Uh, pandemic. 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 Okay. So instead of an epidemic, a pandemic. A pandemic. Um, you know, pandemics. That's before, happen, right? Before we had airplanes moving people back and forth, transporting their germs with them, you had to go like Conestoga to 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 take a dot. You know, someone who was germ infested from one place to another, and even then they didn't get very far. <laughs> Don't go to whatever. They got <laughs> malaria. <laughs> right, and so nowadays you've, uh, we can. Any disease or bug that shows up in one place, it can be all around the world as much faster than it otherwise would have been uh, taken to get there. So uh, I, p- I put a pandemic very high. I go seven, seven oh. or eight. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, you think about that. Back in Bible times, if they'd had planes, everyone would have leprosy. Everybody. Everybody. And the black and the plague and everything. Yeah, everything. Mm-hmm. Okay, and then the last one was alien invasion. Alien invasion. Aliens coming to suck our blood. I want to. They always make them out to be bad. What if aliens just came and wanted, you know, needed a place to sleep? Do you remember when Hawking gave the warning that aliens would probably be evil and, what, like, want yes. to enslave us? I, I think his concept of that is a fee, it's a mirror held up to the human race. Because mm-hmm. it's, it's how we know we've been. And it's what we've done. It's what we've, we've not been, only We've been doing it. Been there, been doing it. That's right. Any mismatch. Whoever's got the bigger stick wins. The bigger stick. And well, or more, and speaking in a more modern sense, whoever, who's got the best, the more advanced technology wins. And so any alien who's crossing the galaxy to visit Earth. So shouldn't Japanese people win? <laughs> so I'm just saying, aliens that come to Earth, they, if they came to Earth across the galaxy, they got more technology than us. So there's a fear factor that they'll all be evil. And my, my, what I think will save us is that they'll take it, they'll study Earth really hard, and they'll look at the 
species that calls itself dominant. And they will conclude, based on all the evidence available to them, that there is no sign of intelligent life on Earth. And thereby leave us alone. You think we're going to be so stupid they're going to leave us Compared alone? Compared to them, if they're that advanced... Leave these ants alone. Have, when was the last time you, you walked past a, a pile of worms and said, yeah, I wonder what they're thinking. I want to make, make peace with them. But this, I've this, also seen people stomp them just well, because they were there. Because they were in the way. Yes. So this is, the, the, this is how I think about, about the, the, the ends of the world. But I think some are more likely than others. I think we're more likely to kill ourselves than to have something in the universe that we then blame it on. Because I just see our behavior. If you just look at our past behavior, it looks, it's, 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 it, uh, uh, it, human behavior scares me. I yeah, it scares me too. And, and you're right, because if the aliens did come here and they didn't want to fight, we'd be like, oh, can we go back to your planet and take everything? <laughs> <laughs> We're just going to do a little cherry pick and see if there's anything we want. Now, I saw a, a, a science fiction, actually it was a science fiction radio play one time, where the aliens came to Earth because they wanted the hydrogen in our water. And they had run out of hydrogen where they were, and they were sucking our water supply. And so they were not fighting us; they were taking our natural resources. And that was a, a, a science fiction author. That's interesting. Well, it's interesting, but they ne that science fiction author never had Astro 101, because they would have learned that 92 percent of the entire universe is made of hydrogen. You don't have no. to come to Earth. <laughs> so everyone, take get it somewhere else. Pay closer. attention in Astro 101, because that's what'll that's what'll work for you there. You could get it closer to your planet. <laughs> You're listening to Star Talk Radio. I'm your host, Neil deGrasse Tyson. I'm an astrophysicist, and I'm accompanied by my intrepid co-host, Lynn Coplet. Lynn, and you, 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 you're on, you've got a TV show. We uh, we open the hour that way, but let me hear again. This. Yeah, it's going to be. It's with Joan and Melissa Rivers. Called the Joan Knows Best. It's on Wee TV, and it premieres January 25th. And the gender twenty. Okay, so and if you go to my website, which, which is, is um, lynncoplitzcomedy.com, you can see um, all my schedule where I am on the road and in New York. And everything. I'll do that because if you're in New York, I'm going to check it out. I want you yeah, to come. Yeah, yeah. So we, uh, you guys should know that I, I tweet the universe daily, and my Twitter handle is Neil Tyson, and I'd love to have you as a follower if you're curious about the universe. I, I don't tweet what I had for breakfast unless there's something cosmically significant about that fact. When I tweet, you're going to learn about the universe. If you want to know what someone had for breakfast, follow my tweets. <laughs> and in fact, I... funny, Lynn. Because <laughs> I did tweet that. <laughs> so, Lynn, I'm going uh, to end each, each uh, Star Talk radio with a cosmic perspective that lands <laughs> in a weekly tweet. That's your nice way of telling me to shut up. Yeah, okay, so i got to like move on to that right Okay, now. interesting. It'll be real quick. Because I think of humans as our greatest enemy. We are our greatest enemy, unlike the dinosaurs where the universe was their greatest enemy. So right now, I send into the Twitterverse my Tweet of the Week. Most extinct life can blame natural forces beyond its control. But when we go extinct, all we get to blame is our stupidity. I'm Neil deGrasse Tyson, signing off for Star Talk Radio, a program airing weekly, uh, uh, partially funded by the National Science Foundation. We will see you in a week.